To become an adult, the larva of a butterfly undergoes a series of changes during the stage known as metamorphosis. Similarly, our body also undergoes a variety of changes as it grows from infant to adult. It is very essential that all life processes in living beings, including development, must initiate at the right time and progress at the right pace. What controls these developmental processes in animals? Secretion of chemical messengers, the hormones, gives signal for development. Animals have two body systems for control and coordination of all body activities. These are the nervous system and the endocrine system. These two systems are interconnected to regulate all body processes. The nervous system acts through electrochemical nerve impulses conducted along the nerve fibers. Ductless endocrine glands, on the other hand, secrete chemical messengers, the hormones, directly in the blood. Although the nervous and the endocrine systems play equally important roles in regulating body processes, can you think of the limitations that apply to the nervous system? Two sections of the nervous system can communicate only if they are connected through nerve fibers. Not every cell of our body is connected to the nerve tissue. On the other hand, since hormones can reach tissue via the blood, they can diffuse all around to reach potentially every cell of the body. The second limitation of the nervous system is that once a message is passed via a nerve cell in the form of an electrical impulse, the same nerve cell will take some time to reset its mechanism before it can transmit a new impulse. Chemical communication via hormones can overcome this problem. They transmit the message to the target cell steadily, continually and for longer duration. How is the endocrine system different from the nervous system? The term hormone originated from the Greek word hormon, which means to set in motion. Or to excite. Most hormones and biomolecules that are either soluble in water or lipids. The endocrine system is a collection of ductless endocrine glands. They pour their hormones directly into the blood. Each gland secretes one or more hormone, each controlling a specific body function. There are so many hormones traveling in the blood. How does a specific hormone deliver the message to the specific target organ only? Think of the male delivery system. The letter is delivered to the right person because of the address written on it. In the same way, the cells of target organs have specific structures called receptors. Hormones moving in the blood identify and bind with these receptors to communicate the message. 
Let's summarize the properties of hormones. Hormones are the chemical messengers of our body. They are produced by ductless endocrine glands. They are poured directly into the blood and they act on specific target organs. Let us look at the major endocrine glands of our body, the hormones secreted by these glands, and their main roles. Pituitary gland, also called the master gland, secretes many hormones that control growth and also regulate the functions of other endocrine glands. The hypothalamus is the major link between the nervous and endocrine systems. Hormones released by hypothalamus give signal to the pituitary and maintain homeostasis. The pineal gland is a very small gland located in the cerebral region of the brain. It plays a role in sleep and body rhythms. The thyroid gland is situated below the voice box, secretes thyroxin and other hormones that control growth, metabolism and calcium levels. Two pairs of parathyroid glands are located on the thyroid glands. They secrete parathyroid hormone that plays an important role in calcium metabolism. The thymus is a small endocrine gland located underneath the breastbone. It is more active in early life. After puberty, this gland slowly begins to shrink. It is involved in development and is an important part of the defense mechanism. Insulin secreted by the pancreas helps in regulating blood sugar levels. Two adrenal glands present, one on each kidney, secrete hormones such as adrenaline that play important role during stress conditions. Other hormones control water and salt balance in the body. Testes and ovaries, like the pancreas, have dual function. Apart from production of gametes, they also secrete sex hormones that control secondary sexual characters. Hormones are required in very little quantities. Too much or too little of any hormone can cause disorders. How do endocrine glands know when to start, increase, decrease or stop the secretion of hormones? The quantities of hormones are controlled by a feedback mechanism. This mechanism ensures that the right amount of hormone is secreted at the right time. Let us take the example of the feedback mechanism for insulin. Some days we tend to overeat. 
As a result, during digestion, more glucose enters the blood. The hypothalamus gland in the brain senses the higher sugar level in the blood and sends a signal to the pituitary. The pituitary gland now sends a signal to the pancreas to secrete greater quantities of insulin. The target organ for insulin is the liver where it helps in conversion of excess glucose to glycogen and releases only the right amount of glucose for the body. This is positive feedback. Now can you guess what will happen if we do not eat for two days? In this situation, a negative feedback will operate. The pituitary will send a signal to the pancreas to reduce insulin production, thereby maintaining the blood sugar level.